A merda! Ai, meu Deus! Xaxaxa! Puxa! So that happened. Um. Story time. Going to Kage Bar. Weird place. It will psychologically destroy you if you're a weak person. And uh, yeah, I guess let's get into the let's get into the madness. <laughs> so the restaurant is in Shinbashi. Um, the place is called Kageya. The theme of the restaurant is this eccentric owner of the restaurant, Mark Kageya. He uh, he's kind of like a one man show. He goes and he uh, gets up into all these costumes and does all these vignettes. And uh, the, the whole experience is really crazy and it's really performance art meets food. So when we got to the restaurant, things were actually kind of awkward because we showed up uh, 10 minutes late with one fewer person on our reservation. So we're on our way now, but one of the guys that was supposed to go with us had to bail last second due to some shit. So we're on our way. I messaged uh, someone else to see if they want to like meet us there or something. So fingers crossed we don't have to look like idiots when we get there. <sighs> so here's what a meal at Kaguya basically looks like from start to finish. It starts with him coming out and doing the theme of the Empire, I believe, from Star Wars. Not sure if that's copyright infringement or not for a public performance, but I'm not going to rat him out to the feds or anything. But yeah, it sounds something kind of like this. <laughs> I was kind of into it because I had seen a video where this had already happened and everything and I knew it was coming so I just thought I'd start off the night by embracing the chaos. A lot of people have like these like formative moments where they realize that they're finally somewhere new and for Tokyo for a lot of people it's like riding the trains for the first time or having your first piece of sushi in Japan. For me it was getting a menu slammed into my crotch and when I say menu I mean actually a children's coloring book with menu items scribbled on in crayon. So how the actual menus work in this restaurant, because it's all very modular, the only thing you can customly order are drink items. So uh, you pick whatever drink you want, and your whole table picks out their drinks and everything. And then uh, there are six different methods in which your drinks and later on your food can be brought out to you. And they're named for six different countries. And uh, each country comes with a specific performance that he'll do for you and everything. So uh, there's the UK, the US, Brazil, France, China, and Japan. And we started with the UK because we got our drinks brought out from the UK. And then we got our dinner brought out in the French style, but we also saw somebody order something from a uh, Japanese and we saw somebody order something from Brazil. So besides the US and China, we saw the uh, all the performances. and. China's the only one I still haven't seen because the video that I watched beforehand had the US shown. One of the people in the restaurant ordered a Japan related item before we could even order anything. So that was the first thing that we saw. And it ended up being a really kind of nice, uh, like dance performance almost. It was very almost calming and nice and ornate and everything. And I think it put everybody at ease at just the right time for the shit show to begin. <laughs> We ended up ordering our drinks using the UK method, and that involved him get, grabbing a teddy bear 
And then the teddy bear started like stretching like a sumo wrestler. And then after the teddy bear was done stretching like a sumo wrestler, he proceeded to give the most Oscar worthy struggle performance. It was something out of like Invincible. He earned his money that night, that, that teddy bear. He definitely did. But I mean, these are the kinds of performances that make Kaguya what they are. They're very weird, but they're awesome at the same time. Then it comes time to order your food. And your food is kind of weird. So how I think it works there is all the food items are the same because uh, it's kind of like izakaya food. So you don't get just brought out one item, you get brought out kind of a smorgasbord of items. And each uh, smorgasbord is different in size. And um, if you get the largest one, there's actually a Nomi Hodai option on it, or like all you can drink. So that's cool if you have a really large party. We got kind of like the second to small sized one, um, but the catch with it is the names of the, uh, the menu items. So I'm gonna quickly pull that up for a sec, hold on. So because we were a group of eight people, we weren't really sure what kind of size we should be going for. So we had a really tough dilemma with the menu items. We had a choice between, hey master, you know what? Today I'm feeling free, get me something. Wow me, bang me, you know what I'm talking about. 2,700 yen. But if that wasn't appealing, we could have also ordered, ah, I can finally get off work. I'm starving, man. Master, would you get me something good, please? 21.65 yen. Oh, and there's one more catch. You have to sing the menu item when you order it. And to the person that orders is also the person that gets stabbed in the crotch with the menu. It's also the person that gets their face rubbed because I made the damn reservation. So he went all onto me and glabbed onto me. I got the full experience. Uh, but part of the full experience was having to humiliate myself by like, singing words and creating a, like, I sounded, I felt like Buddy the Elf, like trying to sing the song about, I'm here and I love you. I really, 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 really love you. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt trying to order food at a bar in Tokyo. That tells you anything about Tokyo. I don't know what else does. So we had our food, which was pretty good. We got our drinks. Mine was especially good because it came in one of those trick cups that when you lift it off the table, it starts spinning. Oh, I felt that was so cool. And the final performance we got to see the night was of uh, Brazil, which involved him putting on an octopus hat and licking an iPhone. I'm not sure if it's his iPhone or if it's a patron's iPhone. I would not be surprised either way. In fact, I'd probably be relieved if it wasn't his iPhone because at least the poor iPhone wouldn't have had to go through all that trauma night after night. <laughs> Yo, Tamara, flash it up to the camera. So at the end of the night, after we went through all the shit and we kind of debriefed with each other, I asked around all my friends to see what they thought of it and if they hated me for taking them there because I gave them no warning of what was coming to happen to us. I talked to my friend Billy, um, who's uh, this woman from Australia, and she put it best when we were talking about it. So I'm gonna let her close on that. So debrief. What did you think of Kageya Bar? Um, a very unique experience, and it definitely, I think, shows the kind of 
a crazy kind of uh, ideal that a lot of uh, Japanese media has. I think it's very interesting to see the things that they laugh at. Yeah. But I thought it was so crazy. It, it was definitely very crazy, very unique experience, <laughs> definitely worth our time and effort. I think uh, in terms of like an experience that you would go about your business and do every week, you wouldn't do that every week. If you're going to a foreign country and you need to have like a crazy night, that is a definitely, definitely the best place to go.